Can you put this on my chair? Hi. We're like, hello. Um, okay, so after I graduated from college, um, I was like, I had bought into this like Jack Kerouac style belief of like, you need to travel the world, you need to find who you are. And so as um, in a sort of stereotypical fashion, I decided I'm going to backpack through Europe. And also in stereotypical fashion, I just decided I'll go with the bag on my back. This is going to be perfect. Like backpacking is the name. I'm supposed to go with a backpack, right? So I decided, yeah, I'll just go with big, one big backpack and arrive in London. And all I knew was that I would arrive into London and then I would do, heck, Europe. This was my plan, right? I would do Europe. And I knew that I wanted to end up in Barcelona so that I could catch a flight back to London and then eventually come back to Beirut. This was my plan. I was super excited about it. Um, so I fly into London. I just graduated from college. I was feeling self-congratulatory. On the flight, um, with my bag checked in into the airline, on, my, on the flight, I decide I should do what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to have like a drink and just enjoy life. So I'm on the flight and I order a cup of wine, a cup of red wine. And um, insofar as I just finished uh, graduating and all exams, I'm exhausted. So I have like two sips of wine um, and I place it on the chair and I'm wearing like blue jeans and a t-shirt, whatever. Um, I place it on the desk and I fall asleep because that's what you do when you have wine after you just finished exams. So I fall asleep and I do one of these, right? And it slips and it uh, falls onto the left side of my pants staining my entire left side of my jeans, right? And so now I have two-toned jeans. I have red side, like my pink left leg and my blue left right leg. But I'm like, oh, what a hilarious, how hilarious is this? I'll land in London, I'll change my jeans, what a great story, no problem, right? So I get to London, British Airways has lost my bag. Um, and I'm like, whatever, it's fine. I'm going to Brussels. They'll send me the bag, European Union. This was like before Brexit, right? So European Union, yalla, they'll send me the bag to Brussels. No big deal. So I go to British Airways. British Airways will not do anything for you unless you walk up in a suit. If you walk up in a suit, just pro tip. If you walk up to baggage control wearing a suit, they'll, they will treat you really well. If you walk up in like ripped, uh, like pink and blue jeans, <laughs> half pink, half blue jeans, they don't do much for you. So I walk up, I said, oh, you lost my bag, please send it to Brussels. And they're like, no, we're not sending it to Brussels. We will send it within Britain, but nowhere else besides Britain. So I'm trying to figure out where to stay. I didn't have a place to stay in London that night. So I'm like, this is pre-Facebook, pre-iPhone, pre-everything. And I'm like looking through like my stupid little notebook for anyone's number in London. I find somebody and it's my friend Anna. In London, I'm like, amazing, I'm gonna stay at Anna's house. I call her up, she's like, hey, meet me at this train station. We're going out tonight, it's gonna to be great. You'll like my, all my friends. I show up at the train station, and I'm still wearing like Tommy Two-Tone pants. I look like a 80s uh, music video. Um, and I see them, and she's like, this is not gonna work. We're going into somewhere nice. You can't like have like jeans stained pants. We're going somewhere nice, so we have to go buy stuff. I'm on a college student's budget. I was like on financial aid my entire life. I didn't have much money, so I was like, oh, it's going to be fine. I'll buy like Walmart-style jeans. London doesn't have Walmart, as it turns out. So I get to London, I, I go to like Topshop or something and end up spending like half of my 10 days worth of allowance on London, in London on bottles of water and like jeans and new boxers and shirts and stuff like that. Three days later, finally my bag comes, and I've literally gone through 50% of my allowance. So I'm freaking out, I'm like, Khalas, I can't do Brussels anymore. Like Paris is gonna have, we're not doing Paris, we're not doing Brussels, we're not doing anything. I'm just gonna go straight to Spain. I'm gonna go to Madrid, and I'll do a couple days in Madrid, and then I'll go to Barcelona. It's gonna be great, all right? And I don't have internet, I'm like in internet cafes. Remember internet cafes? That was a thing, remember? So I'm like in internet cafes on their stupid uh, internet trying to find uh, book flights. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm on the phone with my girlfriend at the time who was in the US. And I'm like, book me a flight. Can you book me a flight? This is my credit card. And I'm like on the EasyJet website trying to figure out the cheapest flight and the cheapest day going to the cheapest city in the world, like trying to figure out like cheap, cheap, cheap. And we are going back and forth between should I go straight to Barcelona or straight to Madrid. Finally, I decide, Khalas, Madrid, amazing. She sends me the confirmation code. I like write it down on this little napkin. Um, and she's like, Stansted Airport, 
Thursday, uh, 3 o'clock, you're going to uh, Madrid. I said it's not like, like here everything is close. The airport's 30 minutes away. Like Sunset Airport may as well be in like, uh, like Tripoli. It's really far. So I, find, I, I like grab an easy jet person. I'm like, where is the flight to Madrid? And he's like, dude, that's at Gatwick. You're at the wrong airport. <laughs> and I flipped out. So I run to the woman uh, behind the desk. The, the person behind the desk is always a woman. The guy, I run to the guy uh, behind the desk and I was like, woman, please, 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 easy jet, easy jet woman, like I need some help, please find me a flight. Like, I'm supposed to go to Madrid. Look, this conclusive napkin clearly says Madrid. <laughs> this is where I'm supposed to go. She types in my, um, she types in my uh, confirmation number and she's like, you're not going to Madrid, you're going to Barcelona. And I was like, so my, my girlfriend totally got this wrong. I'm going to blame it on her. Uh, she totally got this wrong, and she's like, you're going to Barcelona. And I was like, okay, what time does the flight leave? And she's like, it leaves in an hour. So I'm running through the airport. Turns out I didn't have to run because it was super late. And so we're sitting there in the thing, and I don't have a place to stay in Barcelona, right, which is fine. Uh, and I was like, I'll arrive at 10 o'clock. Barcelona is supposed to be friendly. I'll get there. It's supposed to be great. Right? I'll walk around. What's the worst that could happen? Um, so uh, the flight is delayed, delayed, delayed. I don't know what's going on. Delayed, delayed. Um, finally, when we finally arrive in Barcelona, it's like 2 a.m. I don't have a place to stay, and I'm like, whatever, it's fine. Like, it's going to be great. It's going to be good. Um, the, there's like no ATMs closed. And you know like when you think you know something really well? Like you're like, oh, I totally know Spanish. I totally know Spanish. I'm great at Spanish. Like, I listen to, like, Celia Cruz all the time. I'm uh, great. So I arrive in Spain, and I'm like, okay, amazing. Where do I stay? And I see these two rando Americans. You can always tell Americans. It's the, the socks and the, the socks and the <laughs> slippers, right? Sandals. So I was like, hello, hello, hello. Uh, where are you staying? And then as I'm saying the sentence, I was like, this is a ridiculous sentence to say. I was going to say, like, where are you staying, and can I stay with you? Uh, the answer was no. Um, so I'm going through my phone, I'm like, who do I know who's ever been to Barcelona? And my friend Danny, who is currently in Caracas, had been there. So I was like, I'm going to call Danny and he's going to solve this whole thing for me. So I called Danny on my phone, like with the one unit I have left. And I, before I died, so I was like, Danny, I'm stuck in Barcelona, I don't have a place to stay, please, can you find me a place to stay, please, call me back. <laughs> and I hang up and I'm just like waiting there and he's like, okay, um, Waiting, waiting. Finally, the phone rings. He's like, Take out the businke, any cinco to Hostel, Montesa, Blanca, and go to that. And so I was like, Okay, fine. I wrote it down, Autobus, N5, Hostel, Monte Blanco, um, like Catalonia. Okay, cool. So now I'm in Catalonia Square. If you've ever been to Barcelona, it's like where all the buses are. I'm walking around, checking out for Autobus, M5, N5. Finally, I find it. I'm like doing a couple, like, better minutes. Finally, finally, I find it. It's like 3 a.m. now, and I'm like, Autobus, N5. Hello? <laughs> You look like an Cinco, you smell like an Cinco. I think you are an Cinco. And I was like, Hostal. <laughs> and he's like, what are you? And I was like, Monte Blanco, hello. So finally, he, I realized Monte Blanco, I think it's going to be like five minutes. Like, he's going to take me right to the Hostal, right? I thought that. As it turns out, Monte means mountain, right? It's like far. So we're like on the bus in the beginning. There's like 10 people on the bus, 3 a.m. And then like four people. We're going on the bus, slowly climbing on the bus. It's like we're in Bremena now. We're like in Babdet. We're really far. I'm seeing Barcelona over in the distance. It's really, really far at this point. So finally, uh, the guy's like, Monte Blanco. And I, I thought like, thank God I'm not going to die in this bus. <laughs> so finally, I get out of the bus. It's like 4 a.m. at this point. I'm walking around. And there happens to be, like in the distance, there happens to be one of those H things. It's, it's in the mountains. So I'm walking around, walking down, and I see an enormous castle. If you've seen Beauty and the Beast, remember like when they're going to kill the beast, and it's an enormous castle? It was like that castle, right? And there was a buzzer, and the buzzer was like, uh, so I hit the buzzer, thinking, amazing. So I hit the buzzer, <coughs> nothing happens. Finally, I hit the buzzer and you hear, and they're like, the, those door slowly swings open. Um, and I walk in and then I turn. It's like, I didn't have a flight. I didn't have a, a hotel reservation. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't have extra bags. But what I did have was a light on my watch. So I'm going into the darkness with my little watch. 
and hoping it saves me. And I turned the corner and there was an Arabian hostel, like an Arabian castle, not an Arab castle, an Arabian castle. And that's where I stayed. So if you ever go to Barcelona, go to Hostel Monte Blanco. <laughs>